Now with Rangers at Easter Road tomorrow, Celtic once again had a 24-hour start in the championship race, but today looked sure to be a tough one for them. Hearts are one of the country's form sides and had won their last four away matches. Celtic, meanwhile, were looking to stretch their unbeaten run in domestic matches to 25 games. Commentary from Jock Brown. The big names missing from that Celtic team are Tommy Boyd, who's suspended, and John Collins, who's unfit. Manager Tommy Barnes appears determined to retain the shape of the side, so Brian O'Neill wears Boyd's number two in central defence, and Brian McLaughlin's the straight replacement for Collins, wide on the left of midfield. The major blow for Hearts is the absence of goalkeeper Gilles Rousset, who failed a fitness test this morning and a hamstring injury. So Craig Nelson comes in after a 20-match absence. Alan Lawrence and John Cahoon continue as a striking partnership with John Robertson on the bench. And Pasquale Bruno replaces Alan McManus after completing his two-match suspension. Brian McLaughlin clearly enjoys his manager confidence, replacing John Collins and keeping international players like Phil O'Donnell and Morton Vickhorst on the bench. He scored his first goals for Celtic against Hearts at Tynecastle in September. It's another big game for Italian international Pasquale Bruno, who was ordered off against Aberdeen three weeks ago after 18 consecutive matches, which coincided with Hart's upsurge in form after a slow start to the season. The referee this afternoon, a very experienced official, Mr. Bobby Tate from East Kilbride. Every Celtic match at this stage in the season of the utmost importance as they chase Rangers for the championship. This is certainly no exception, as reflected by a near-capacity crowd once again. Tremendous atmosphere inside the stadium. Celtic begin the now familiar pattern of play. Passing smoothly from the back through midfield. That one cut off though by Steve Goulton, a former Celtic player. That's for Alan Johnston. Point in his onside. Challenged by Hughes. There's no infringement there. Last player is looking towards the referee, hopefully. Turned away by Alan Lawrence for a Celtic throw. In Celtic's form also reflected by the fact that the last lost a match in domestic competition on the 30th of September. That was against Rangers here. So since then, 24 without defeat, 17 wins, 7 draws. That's why they're in the championship race. Hart, on the other hand, improving rapidly as the season goes on. And since losing... On New Year's Day against Hibs, they've had eight wins and only two defeats. Brian McLaughlin concedes a corner kick. Put in the pressure all the way there by Gary Locke, the Hearts captain. So an early opportunity for Hearts to maintain their good recent form. Marshall's in trouble. Headed away by Van Hoydon. Alarm there for the Celtic defence. God Marshall's complete misjudgment of that corner kick will have caused some concern. Across the middle, Celtic have finally mixed a Grant and McLaughlin and Hoyland and Tom up front. Good running by Donnelly. That's for McLaughlin. Tackle was by Gary Locke. The free kick's been given. Locke complaining he played the ball. Fairness to him, I think he may have a case here. Well, it did appear to play the ball first. But it is a very good opportunity this for Celtic. Gavin Hoydon, the free kick expert. Not quite the right angle of a right footed player, but really little trouble too much. Discussion with his skipper, Paul McStay. The referee makes the wall retreat, and now it's Van Hoydon. Off the wall, to walk on once. Paul McStay for Celtic! A searing drive from Paul McStay. It's only a second goal of the season, and there was no possible answer to that. Magnificent strike by McStay. Well, he doesn't score too often but that really was sensational well, I'm sure it's just the kind of start that Jim Jeffries the last manager was dreading for Celtic in such good form getting off to such a bright start was exactly what Hearts were trying to avoid I'm sure it's a good turn by Johnston 
Grant, Tom, careless one. Big passing forward now to Fulton. Good flight of foot there by Steve Fulton. Back to the stadium where he initially made his name as a young Celtic star. Before moving on to Bolton Wanderers and then Falkirk and recently the Hearts. It's a long way out for a direct shot at goal this. That's Fulton. Very well struck by Fulton. Lord Marshall made sure in his body behind that. There was no mistake by the keeper here. But this was very well struck by Steve Fulton. Awkward for the keeper. Here's Bruno. One of three central defenders along with David McPherson and Paul Ritchie for Hearts. Gary Locke and Neil Point in the wing backs in these wide positions. Here's Tom. Van Hoydonk inside, McKinley on the outside. Thornley and Van Hoydonk wait inside the area. And Van Hoydonk! 2-0 to Celtic. Another superb move from Celtic. Tosh McKinley looks up, picks out Pierre Van Hoydonk. That was tailor-made for the big striker. He nods home his 22nd goal of the season. A great build-up, ending with a superb Screen cross from McKinley. The strength in the air of Van Hoydonk. Too much for Nelson. 2-0 to Celtic. And they really are now in full cry. Van Hoydonk, the goal-scoring menace again. Here's Cahoon. Impeded there, making for the byline. It's just outside the area. The foul committed by Brian O'Neill. Good opportunity this for Hearts. They will be anxious to get back into the game quickly. Ryan O'Neill's foul gives this free kick. Fulton's free kick. Palmed away the there, not too convincingly by Marshall. He's still in some difficulty. Point and plays that over. He thought there was a deflection off back to Mana. The referee and linesman don't agree. It's a goal kick. Well, Gordon Marshall again will be relieved to see the end of this incident, I'm sure. Did well to block that from Bruno. And Pointing's effort goes over the top. Misunderstanding of him staying Bonnell and McStay winning it back. Look at the hustling tactics from Celtic. Closing down defenders so rapidly. That's a good tackle again by McNamara. Is Cahan. Nimble footwork from Donnelly. Van Hoydonk to McStay. Of course, Donnelly again. Read well by McPherson for Hearts. Well, Hearts going through the mill now, and Tommy Bond's entitled to be very happy indeed with a sizzling start from Celtic. Patient build up play again from Celtic. Overhit by Hughes, turns away, disgusted his own pass. He wasn't at all pleased with that, taking some advice from the dugout there. Poor kick out going Celtic, a chance to come forward again with Andreas Tom looking there for Van Hoydon. A far long cross. Striker needs some help here. Oh, he's retained possession well. Applauded by the Celtic supporters. The Celtic begin again with Lachlan. Attacking the lock. That's oh, great running by McLaughlin. Another chance on for Celtic. Brian 
did well against McNamara, but the cover is supplied instantly by Hughes. Now Tom. That's for Grant. Nelson was in trouble, he did just enough there. Bruno nudges the ball away. Van Hoydok challenges in the air. His elbow is up, it's a free kick to Hearts. Well, relief there for Craig Nelson. What a return to the first team this is for him. Look as though Peter Grant might just beat him to that. Cahun. Good play. Johnston breaks. Excellent close control. That's what he's renowned for. He's picked out Coulton. Pointing well forward again on the left hand side. Covered well after the stumble. Great chance there for Hearts. Pascali Bruno right inside the six yard box. Wasn't picked up by Celtic. Oh, what an excellent chance this was. Fine play by Poynton. This angle cross with the right foot. Look at this space. Two half players had. Bruno in particular. And a minor there to Celtic. Good places they can easily set in in this situation. The bench was badly caught out there. Once again, the man has got a hat trick against Ranger Ibrox. Another excellent finish, although certainly the pressure was off because George Kerr, the linesman there, had the flag up. And the pass was delivered. Jim Jeff is anxious to get these players into the dressing room at half time, I'm sure. There'll be a few words to be said sternly, I'm sure. Mike Person. A point. Beautifully driven cross that. One by O'Neill. Block towards Johnston. Another misunderstanding there. Celtic have uh, the goal kick. The referee Bobby Tate has checked his watch as Gordon Marshall takes the goal kick. That'll tell him I think there's a bit of stoppage time to add. We're in that now as McLaughlin breaks. That's for Peter Grant. Cross goes Ritchie. Back it comes to Tom. Good play by Grant. Lachlan to McStay. Celtic quite content to play the ball back to retain possession. Wait for the moment. McNamara under pressure from Lawrence. O'Neill to McLaughlin. That's McKinley. McLaughlin again and referee Bobby Tate ends the heart's misery by blowing the half time whistle. A searing start to the match from Celtic, started by Paul McStay, an incredible 25 yarder after just seven minutes. And then five minutes later, a superb header by Pierre Van Hoydonk. Ryan McLaughlin got the third in 18 minutes, and hearts look to be buried. It's been a great first half for Celtic. Celtic three, hearts nil. So a major change made by Hearts for the second half. John Robertson has come on in attack, starting the match up front with John Cahoon. And the player who's gone off is Pasquale Bruno. So Hearts with a very tough task to face in the second half. But for Celtic too, they have the problem of trying to pick up their momentum again after that interval. They were playing so well in the opening spell of the match, and now they have to try to sharpen this off again in circumstances where they really are entitled to feel the match is won so it will be a tribute to the management skill to Tommy Barnes to see how Celtic start the second period good tackle there by McKinley O'Neill picks it up and a credit due to Jim Jeffries for being very adventurous with his team selection for the second half this is Donnelly looking for Van Hoydon he's spinning Nelson got across to get a touch, turning it away for the corner. Menacing figure by Hoydon going in and goalkeepers like that. 
played forward to him by Donnelly. There was Van Hooydonk and Nelson Kane to turn that to safety. Yeah, you Van Hooydonk. Mike Namara on the flank. No chance of getting that past two defenders. Just to set up for a throw. Plenty of movement being offered by the Celtic players for the throw. That's good play by Mike Namara. McLaughlin's header, the smallest player in the field. Tom turns it back. Kai gets the header of Grant. This is Cahoon. Lock to Mackay. Lawrence is onside. A great chance here for Hearts. Like the bit of conviction there, Lawrence. Had the pace surely to carry on in and goal. Chose to shoot from the edge of the area. It was Brian McLaughlin who was the nearest player to him in the end. Back tracking quickly there as Lawrence set himself for the shot. Well, what Hearts have actually done in the second half is they changed the system. They're going to match up against Celtic. A stumble there by Tom was unforced for Celtic. Break for Hearts, though. They're going to a flat back four. Hearts with Locke, McPherson, Ritchie, and Poynton. Playing Johnston wide in the right, and Lawrence coming in from the left with two in the middle. Mackay and Fulton and Cahoon and Robertson up front. So, effectively moving to a 4 4 2 formation. Moving to a 4-3-3. Clearance there was by Grant. It goes straight to Fulton. Guy close down by O'Neill. Now the counter attack on, led by Paul McStay for Celtic. Retaining possession brilliantly, They're going past the offside trap. And Hoydon checked back on side. Invited McStay to keep on running. Halted by McPherson now. Johnson showing too much of that to Grant. And Hoydonk. Grant. Sharp into passing by Celtic. And error by Grant. That's Mackay. Lever Robertson. Last point play by Robertson. An excellent defending by Mike Namara. Back with Alan Lawrence. Reflection there, Gordon Marshall goes to settle any arguments about corner kicks. Well, some very good attacking play again coming from Hearts. And some excellent defending also by Celtic. And when the ball was fed through here by Gary Mackay, it was picked up by John Robertson. But just look at the quality of this challenge by Jackie McNamara. Mackay and Robertson combining well again. Alan Johnston. Van Hoydonk screening the ball from McPherson. Does that so well? Here's Peter Grant. Van Hoydonk striding clear. Tom in the middle waiting for this. Finally getting there too. Back it comes to Van Hoydonk. A good save by Nelson. Another splendid Celtic attack. Well, the contribution made by Peter Grant was so important to release that pass for Van Hooydonk. He tried to pick out Andreas Tom. It was well intercepted, but it gave Van Hooydonk a shooting chance. Well, Hearts manager Jim Jeffers has made a very bold decision to change the system the way he has, bearing in mind the good spell of form his team has enjoyed in recent weeks, and also bearing in mind a very important cup quarter-final coming up on Thursday night against St Johnston. Formation changed at this stage, he has to make a big decision again for that match. But he's principally concerned to compete and survive here. McLaughlin wants the ball all the time now. Van Hooydonk with a return, that's McLaughlin again. Andrew Tom turned it over, that was brilliant play from Celtic again. McLaughlin almost scoring a classic. Well, the 
exchange of passes with Pierre van Hooydonk. Hooydonk had a shooting chance there, but he deceived them all by checking inside. Nelson was beaten there, and Andreas Tom will believe he should have scored from there. The midfield battle continues. Grant winning that particular joust. set up a chance here for Morton Beekhorst. Cahoon's cross, and Marshall again they got that right. Johnston providing the problem. margin for error here as Donnelly looks up to spot the positioning of Van Hooydonk a big striker closing in on that rapidly but Nelson did well he cost of his immense confidence at this stage going past defenders so well and the pullback cut off well by McPherson Cahoon now uh, to Johnston good running by Gary Locke the advantage rule might have been applied there but referee Tate saw that foul as he's enough to halt the play there was Johnson, you see Locke going outside, it was a very well judged pass, certainly a foul by McKinley. Wilton's free kick, attacked at the far post by John Miller, one of the best headers of the ball in the country in that position, that's easily taken by Marshall, attempt at a dipping volley from Cahoon. Breaking there kindly for Cahoon on the bounce and Marshall back far enough to take the catch. It's Tosh McKinley and McLaughlin. Good running again by O'Donnell, but he mistimed it. Well, it's normally his great strength that the way O'Donnell breaks from midfield to support the front. The timing was wrong on the run again. goes Robertson so very well by Miller the first touch let him down the guy has locked on the outside in the middle is Robertson couldn't have been closer once again totally isolated there picked up by no one and that will alarm Tommy Barnes Mackay spotted him in position there, picked him out brilliantly with this cross. But look at the space Robertson has for that header. Hughes. There's my cross. And that pressure from Donald. He cross getting back to help make the matter. And this understanding there that Donald sorts it out for something. Clumsy 
challenge by O'Neill. Clear foul on Cahoon. Well, Celtic will have to sort out this understanding at the back because there have been two or three occasions when players have found space in the centre of the penalty box. No one near them. Good play by McKinley. Here's McLaughlin. Donnelly wants the ball in the middle. It's a great pass. the record for the season and they have still four minutes remaining in which to break the record Coulton that's oh, great play by Steve Coulton well that would have been a beauty former Celtic player Parkhead. Look at his contribution here. Goes for the turn. Look at the spin here, turning away, and very good goalkeeping again by Gordon Marshall. Marshall's committed himself for this. Well, he's had a very good match after missing a cross right at the start of the match. He's played very well indeed, and Wesley Bobby Tate brings an excellent Celtic performance to an end. And the game was effectively won and lost in the opening 18 minutes with goals from McStay, from Van Hooydonk and McLaughlin, enjoyed by these Celtic supporters. Inevitable perhaps the second half is something of an anticlimax until Simon Donnelly scored that beauty. Four minutes from the end, it's Celtic four, hearts nil. I think first half we played very well. Uh, second half I felt we stuttered a wee bit. But in saying that, the last 10 minutes we picked up a wee bit and both centre supporters, so I'm happy with that final goal. You had, of course, Paul McStay producing that uh, outstanding opener. That's two inside a month for him. Is that something of a record for him? <laughs> that's, that's right. Uh, oh, we've continually told him that he's got a good strike uh, on the ball. And we've told him that if he's in the right area, not to think about taking it and maybe making a wee pass, just to take it and have a, have a strike at the goal. And uh, thankfully the last two have went in for him. You chose Brian McLaughlin to replace John Collins rather than uh, shuffle the pack to bring in Phil O'Donnell or Morton Vickers. Does that say something about your belief in that young man? Very much so. I, I think McLaughlin is a player of rare talent. He's got fantastic movement about him in the game. He understands the game very well, I feel. And he adds a, a real good shape to our team when he, when he plays in that role. The warning signs were there in the first half at Kilmarnock last week. We didn't get away with today, so you know we'll get back, uh, back into harness tomorrow and, uh, and get prepared for the cup tie. No jolting then in your faith about the side with the cup in mind next week? No, it turned out to be the best thing that happened. I mean, we lost to Aberdeen. Uh, played better than we did today, but we, we lost to Aberdeen and then it spun us, into, spun us up for the, the Kilmarnock Cup tie. And uh, hopefully this will do the same. But, uh, you know, <laughs> just the ironic thing is we could have we could have scored three or four. That's the best chances we've had for weeks and we could have scored three or four goals. Two four nils in a row. Good goal scoring performances. The latest in Jorge Cadetti. What's the latest? The latest is that we sat I sent the boy home this morning. I spoke to him at length last night and told him that, you know, obviously in order for him to come here and be a player for Celtic, we're going to have to negotiate a transfer fee. And if that was the case, there wouldn't be any problem in the first place, Jock, but we were allowed to believe that the boy was free. Uh, if that is the case, then we're quite happy to sit down and negotiate with Sporting to, to bring him here. That's something we're going to, you know, strive to do this week. But equally, I wanted him to go home and talk to his wife because it's a difference between coming somewhere for two or three months as opposed to what we're asking him to come for maybe two or three years. So that's a decision he's got to make. But in saying that, we'll be doing our utmost to get him here next week.